Hello, my name is Kyle Cherick, and I host a television show on PBS called Wisconsin Foodie. But today I am here at the Madison College Chef Demo Series, sponsored by Volrath, with two wonderful chefs. On the far end is Gail Gand, who is the first lady of pastry and baking in America. And more immediately to my right is Mary Katzman, who is an alumni of Madison College and has just taken the helm as the uh, executive chef at the Driftless Cafe, which was nominated, excuse me, semi finaled for a James Beard two years ago. So it's great to have you both here. Thanks. thanks. This is pretty thanks. cool. Yeah, I was going to say thanks for getting us out of the kitchen, but we're actually yeah, yeah, right yeah, back yeah. in the kitchen. We're in this amazing Madison <laughs> College kitchen. Someone else's kitchen. kitchen. Yeah. Really nice. So this yeah. is not the kitchen that you learned in. No, no, no. Yeah, your, your 2000, year 2012. Correct. Concept, yeah. And this edition is just a couple of years old. Correct. Yes. Um, but what we want to talk about, at least what I want to talk about, is uh, women in the industry, your experience, and your experience because you and others of your ilk and generation really broke, broke the seal in many ways and set the standard for that experience and endured a lot of different things that um, I know you've mentioned on other panels when you've sat with folks of Mary's age, th they don't even have that. They don't even really know what you're talking about. That's right. not a reality, which is the great news. Yeah, that means we... It worked. Yeah. We were successful. Yeah. And yeah. You, know, you weren't the only... Were you the only woman in the kitchen when you started out? When I started out, yes. I think I, in, I started in Madison here, so I think I was in my first restaurant. And did yes. you feel any tension or any pressure to, you know... I think I felt like the guys there had felt like they had to be on best behavior. Oh, really? Yes. Oh, I see. So there was a definite We're, shift. Oh, yeah. Radical. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Your story is... no interest in being on their best behavior around. But, but like they had gotten a talking to, like God, something yeah. is happening. Well, HR. Yeah, happened. yeah, right? Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah. Huh. yeah, HR happened. Yeah. When I first got into the kitchen, you know, they always thought I would be the weak link and that they would need to help me a lot, help me lift stuff, help me reach stuff. Right. And so the first thing I did was devise ways to not need that kind of help. Yeah. So I always right. had a milk crate nearby. Um, I've got a technique for like lifting a hundred pound sack of flour onto the counter yeah. and how to get the you know ingredients into a bin. Gabrielle Hamilton takes about, talks about the same sort of stuff. Really? Yeah. And I'm short anyway. I, yeah. I'm like five <laughs> feet, so I'm not the tallest girl. Right. Anyway, you um, are like a sack of flour but when you're, you stand it up. <laughs> <Right>. Thanks. <laughs> um, so that was part of it is like to not be dependent on them. And I remember, you know, they come up and they go, you know, do you need help with that? And I'd say, you know, when I need help. Right. Yeah. You know, so you have to kind of like shoo them away. Yeah. Because I mean, they will yeah. want to build sort of a, a dependency. I, th you. I think there was like a general sense of too of like, oh, is she going to shoot holes in the bottom of the boat type of mentality. Mm. And so then you have to kind of, granted it was an internship for me, so that could have been anybody walking in because this is my first time in the kitchen. Right, but, right. you know, it's like you get that opportunity that you have to prove yourself. So you have to do those things and make those modifications if you need to. <laughs> when I would get into a kitchen early on, I would prove myself verbally by swearing a lot. And that they're like, ooh, she'll, she'll go there? Okay, like don't. You know, don't mm. cross her. So if you can like lay out the f bomb a couple times and just that helps them feel more comfortable with you. Um, and that language was allowed, mm -hmm. you know, 40 years ago, right. 30 years ago, 20 years ago. Maybe how, so but how now. disingenuous was that? I mean, that's not who you are that I know. In the kitchen, it can be if I need to be. And you know, I've worked in kitchens. I remember there was a time I was I was cooking for a, a woman's chef's event. Okay. Um, <laughs> In California, mm -hmm. I believe it was at Pebble Beach, and the head chef of that kitchen, I had Rick with me as my sous chef, right? Okay. And every time the chef had a question about like what kind of tray did I need, or you know what kind of equipment did I need on my station to put out, it was like Nancy Oaks, and it was all female chefs. He'd always go to Rick, mm. and Rick was nice enough to say, I don't know, ask Gail. Like he'd have to redirect him to me. Yeah. And so when I get in that kind of situation, I can get get kind of rough. Well, that's, that's fair, because that's, that's just rude, flat yeah. out. Yeah. yeah, it's just disrespectful. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So go back to the shoot the bottom, shoot uh, holes in the bottom of the boat or whatever you said. What do you mean by that, or what was that, just, what was that experience? Uh, uh, it was just sort of like, you know, it was my first, it was my internship right out of culinary school, so I didn't have a lot of practical experience, and it was a very busy restaurant. And, uh, or a know. lot of street cred. It wasn't like, well, I worked here, and worked here, and worked here, and don't push me around. Right. Yeah. Right. So it was like, she's got to pull her weight. Like, is she just going to bring us down? Or are we still going to oh, be able to, you know, get yeah. all the prep done, you know, for we, the day? We, we you know, 
yeah. exactly. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, but within like a few days, you know, I came yeah. in, did my job, and it's like, all right, yeah, okay. This I is remember <laughs> I was staging in a kitchen in France. I was in uh, the kitchen of Le Pierre mm -hmm. which is Ferdinand Poin's restaurant. Yeah. But he was dead at yeah. that point, but yeah. Madame Poin was still alive. Right. And I was the, yeah. having lunch there. One of the most classic restaurants in the Western Hemisphere. Right. Yeah, I mean, just like you could quit that job like and say, job. I'm good. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I had a lunch reservation there, and I decided to show up at like 7 a.m. for my 1 o'clock lunch reservation and see if I could stage in the kitchen. And I knocked on the door, and I said, you know, is there any chance I could, in my bad, endearing French, could sure. I stage in the kitchen? And they are like, uh, are you a journalist? Yeah. I'm like, no, 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 I'm just an American girl wanting to learn. Yeah. I'm like, you're sure you're not, uh, yeah. you know, from the paper? I'm like, nope. And like, he slammed the door in my face, went away for like two minutes. He came back. He's like, you want to work in the kitchen? I'm like, yeah. yeah. He slams the door again, you know, gone for three minutes, comes back. He says, okay, you can, you can come in the kitchen, but you sit in that corner and you don't touch anything. And I said, yes, chef. And I sat in the corner. And what you do, if you're ever in this situation, you find the guy in the kitchen who's doing the most menial job. There was like a 14-year-old Comey who yeah, had sure. a whole sack of carrots to peel. Yeah. And after a while, I just like went over to him. I'm like, I'm sure you have better things to do. Why don't you let me do this for you? And so I peeled all his carrots. And while I'm peeling the carrots, I'm looking for the next guy. And there's a guy who's like peeling potatoes. So I start doing everyone's prep for them. And within about three hours, I'm like everyone's best friend. Yes. <laughs> because I've done all their problems. Solve their problems. Yeah, and they're like, oh, American girl, come yeah. over here. Let me show you this. Yeah. And they're like stuffing truffles under the skin of chickens. And that was where I learned this trick when you're baking creme brulee. If you put a newspaper in the bottom of your roasting pan mm -hmm. and then do your water bath. Yeah. You've got that layer of paper that's soaked with water. Yeah. So there's never contact between oh, wow. the oh, ramekin sure. and the metal pan. Yeah. Which is why you get it's those pin holes yeah. in, in the bottom of your yeah. custards oh, when wow. you bake them. So because it never gets more than 212 degrees <laughs> between your ramekin and your pan. I love that. So that's now, great. They're, now they're like selling me family secrets. Right, right. <laughs> By the end of the yes. Meal. And then yes. my lunch was comped, which was sure. terrific. I mean, for you to break down misogynistic French kitchen. In That's a matter of hours, basically through peeling potatoes and carrots. Yeah. Yeah. Well, they're, they're, they're a loving and sharing um, people, but there's, you know, you sort of have to prove yourself. Yeah. When I first was working at that bakery early morning, mm -hmm. I mentioned like mm -hmm. a bonus. When you're a lover, yeah. Yeah, and I had a inter letter of introduction to work in this kitchen. Right. And I met the chef, and he looks at me and he says, uh, you know, where's your paper and pencil? I'm like, oh, chef, you know, I didn't want to be presumptuous that. that it would be okay to write anything down. He's like, well, you don't want my recipes? Like, like kind of, I'm like, no, no, chef, I do. Like, it's, it, it can flip. You yeah. Know, it's sure. funny. Sure, yeah. It's not the same, but an American chef that penetrated the French kitchens in New York, Sandy DiMato, he's a man. Okay. But he was, he oh, I know went, Sandy. Yeah, he yeah. went with a letter of uh, introduction, yeah. and the chef turned him away, and he went to another restaurant, and it was like this misunderstanding of, oh, you know so-and-so? So they gave him a job. Right. For the first year, they swore at him in French, but he didn't know French, so they, <laughs> they didn't know. Yeah, yeah they thought no they, he was like, being complimented and like, like cheered yeah, on. Thanks. Yeah, exactly. Merci. Exactly. And eventually, he proved himself. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but back to to women in kitchens yeah. and how things have evolved. So rarity, more commonality. Um, Which makes to, me feel really good. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like you know that that ship is sailing in the right direction, and you didn't. It, shoot any holes in the bottom of yeah, it. Yeah, that's true. So I appreciate that. Well, I can't wait until the moment in media where someone like myself, uh, long after, I, hopefully I'm still in the game, where they don't even say, let's talk about women right. in kitchens. Right, right. right. Like, that's not, like that's not even a thing. It's like as my kids study segregation, they're yeah. like, what? Yeah. The different water fountains? What? Right, like, like, they just can't even fathom. There, yeah, there's no, that's so ridiculous. Yeah. That that's that was a thing at one at one right. point. Oh yeah, I know yeah. Dominique Crenn talks about a lot about that. Like, why do we even have to have a category of best female chef? Best women why right. can't they just be in the category to, of best to, chef? To chef. get to the point where we don't need the category. Yes. But it's yeah. like we needed it to get yeah. to the point where we don't need it. Yeah. You know, one of the great she's not a restaurant chef, but one of the great cooks 
um, that I got a chance to work with is Julia Child, which I heard you Amazing. earlier talking yes. about <laughs> that you uh, would like to work with Julia. And I just had a big smile on my face while you were saying that because she was, you know, she was funny, she was tall, she was gawky, she was inquisitive. Um, so I got to be in her baking book, Baking with Julia. So okay. there's 27 of us that got phone calls saying, hello, this is Julia Child calling. <laughs> Will you want to be in my new book? <laughs> <laughs> like, like you have to say, yeah, 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 like yeah, doesn't right. everyone right. know that voice? Right. right. Yeah. Right. So, uh, and part of, so you write the recipes and you send them in to Dory Greenspan, mm -hmm. was the writer at the oh, time. Oh wow! Well, she yeah. was a cookbook. She was a you know a co-author yeah. for people yeah. at that point. Yeah. Not her. Well, and that's part self. of Julia's legacy is that whenever she found a woman that she could pull along, she did. But there had to be the merit there. It wasn't just let me pull you along because you're a woman. It's, you've got the goods. She was interested yeah. in, and she wanted to know everything about your background and what inspired you and who cooked in your family that impacted your life, you know, to want to be doing this. And I got to go on book signings with her, which that was great, because she just kicked ass. She could, like, do, like, one every 20 seconds, but people would want to tell their story, and she... They would she would get, listen. She would listen, and yeah. they felt listened to. Yeah. And I watched her do that with hundreds of people, and it was so admirable yeah. Yeah. and so lovely. Yeah. And she, you know, she was in her 80s then, and you know, she could stay up all night just <laughs> talking to people about how, the, what it, you know what they're interested in and how they got interested in food. And, right. I mean, and great. seeing somebody like her on television, you know, as well, and being a role model for young women is, is huge. And you followed in that path, too, yep. on your show, being a role model for young women. So it's having as many of those in the public eye, I think, is super important. Do you want to pinch yourself right now? Yeah, like this a is really bit. happening. A little bit, yeah. It's, <laughs> it's a little surreal here. What sure. I loved about it, my son Gio was like three, four, five, six at the time. And I got to show him that women work. Mm -hmm. that women pick jobs that they love. Um, I remember Gio, he was like four at the time, and he was talking to his best friend, Artie Bess, who lived next door, who was five, you know, a year older than him. <laughs> and he says, hey, Artie, what kind of TV show does your mom have? Because <laughs> he just thought, like, all moms That's what have. Moms That's what moms like, yeah. driving a soccer, and they you yeah. know, right. fold your clothes, and they have a TV show. Yeah. And, like, that was his reality, and I loved that that was his reality. Yeah. My... My current husband, I have twin girls with mm -hmm. him, as you know, yeah. who are 14, and he stopped working to be a stay-at-home dad so I could, you know, have your life. fly off to San Diego or yeah. wherever I need to be to, to teach or make an appearance. And one time he was going to give a speech back at his old job. He was an environmental grant officer at the Joyce Foundation. And we all went downtown that day. The girls weren't in school yet. And so we all had lunch. And then Jimmy said, oh, I got to go to work now, but I'll meet you guys in two hours. And both my daughters looked at me and go, daddies don't work. Mommies work. <laughs> I was like, oh, my God, we've, like, done it too well. <laughs> like, they didn't even know that, like, dads go to work. Yeah. They think all dads stay home. So we'd done, like, a reverse, you know, role thing. Which is, yeah, which <laughs> right. is fantastic. But you do work. I do work. And you do have a child. I do. I have an 18-month-old daughter. Yeah. Do you? I do. Yeah. Great. Yes. Yeah. So, I mean, my, uh, my husband, Derek, is amazing. And, you know, he, he works from home, but, you know, she, she still goes to daycare during the day, but mm -hmm. he picks her up at night. I couldn't mm -hmm. do it without him. Right. Absolutely. Right. I mean, it's, you have to have the support team. system in place, you and know. I, I think you were talking about balance earlier, juggling, you know, the sort of juggling that we do and the balance we do to... Be, a, be present as a parent and as a mother. Right. Yeah. You know, I, Gio's graduating college on Monday. You know, going going to the show. <laughs> so what's the thing? I'm a big fan of taking um, challenges and turning them into positives, right? And usually that's only, at least for me, through the lens of time. Where so I like can a look crack back. in the cheesecake, make that a yeah, positive. Yeah, correct, correct. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Circle well, it in chocolate. Yeah. No, I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, yeah, what's his name in Italy did exactly that. The cake fell on the floor, and he's like, this is our new dessert. Uh, so what was the thing that was a challenge for you, a hindrance, as a female chef at the time that you were coming up, that now, sort of in retrospect, you know, you could say, you know, that really sort of shaped me, or my career went this way, or I'm maybe not glad it happened, but it, it worked out. The only thing I can think of is sort of the, the big picture thing, which is, you know, got thrown into pastry where women were thrown. Yeah. 
said, ah, let me, you know, I'm going to want to be out of here soon. Right. And every time my chef said, are you ready to get out? I was like, nah, not quite yet. Yeah. And it turned out it was well suited for it. And I loved it. So yeah. why not do it? You wouldn't have found that on saute or no. something. No. Yeah. No. Yeah. Yeah. Do you have anything like that so far? I know you're fairly new in your career, but... I would say like something similar. I think that in addition to pastry, women can oftentimes get thrown on the garmage stations and That's never ever starts. never leave. You know because you know, we detail you like fresh little things. Right. Well, <laughs> <laughs> I guess. But um, yeah. manual dexterity. Right. Manual dexterity or detail orientated. You know these are things that naturally come pretty well to chefs, I think. So, of course, we're going to be good at garmage, but I don't know. Women tend, to, <laughs> women tend to, to, gra- to get stuck on those stations. So I felt like I, that happened to me a little bit, even when I was working in a female-owned restaurant. Um, I think of our hands actually do butchering well, too. Oh, yeah. You know, anatomy and... Of course they do, because, I mean, I would want a pastry chef, quite frankly, to find the silver skin and make that cut more than a heavy-handed <laughs> right. bro. I mean... I just would. Well, you lose yeah. a lot of product. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, seriously. Yeah. <laughs> Screws up the food cost. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, it tastes better on the other side. Uh, so there's there's definitely some of that, and I think if I had had a little bit more mentorship early on about becoming a leader, you know, I mm. might have been able to take those steps um, sooner. Mm-hmm. Um, That's an interesting point, though. Yeah. I don't know if you know women are raised to lead. Geo went to a couple different colleges to finish his degree. And at one of the colleges, they would talk to you about if you, um, like when you go work for so-and-so company. And he, then he went to this just, other college. Just the assumption. And they said, when you're the CEO of so-and-so company. And so there's sort of a, you know, certain schools raise you as a leader. Yeah. And I think for women, you know, sometimes we miss out on that because the assumption is not that we're going to be the leader. I think, hmm. too, there's also this mentality that you have to pay your dues as a chef, right? You have to work from the bottom and work your way up. And then I think typically women also get left behind in that because you know they, we, they're not in leader, enough leadership positions yet. I mean, we're definitely getting better, but mm-hmm. uh, we have to sort of institute change. I don't know from within, I don't know we have to tear the whole thing down and build it up again. Right. But um, yeah, so kind of getting stuck in that flow of yeah. you know paying your dues. So when is the time? Like, when do you take that step? Do you have to take it yourself? Do you, you know, do you need the people to support you to do it? All, and all you know, things. part of what happens in the restaurant business is you get promoted because someone else got fired, right? Or right. someone else walked out right. or didn't show up, and it's like, oh, you know this job, you have that skill, you take True. that. Yeah. You know, now you're the sous chef. So mentoring is everything. I mean, it's how we move forward. What do you wish you'd had? What did you have? How did those bridges happen for you? You came up in a different era. Yeah, the one that me, bumps up against Mary's. I mean, were, you There know. really wasn't any female mentors for me, so I'm sort of self-mentored. Yeah. Um, no, what would I, Julia say? You came up in the industry. You No, you learned in the field. You learned in the you field. You learned in the field. You learned in the field. I was like, I'm yeah. self-taught. No, 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 never say you're self-taught. Always say you learned in the field. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I learned out in the field. <laughs> um, but I, I mentor now when asked to. Yeah. And I, I have one um, woman, Jess Dawson, who came to me when she was 14. She's 23 now. Okay. But she wanted to be a pastry chef, and she's like, how do I get hired, I don't have any experience, no one will hire me. I said, well, find yourself a pastry chef and offer to do her dishes. And she looks at me and she's like, do you, do you need your dishes done? <laughs> <laughs> Touche. Yeah, I'm like, send me an email, like, let me see if you follow up. Sure. She had come to one of my demos. And so I worked with her. She ended up going to CIA and she actually just got off a two year stint with America's Test Kitchen on cruise ships. Oh, right wow. on. She's traveled yeah. all over the world, so, yeah. so that one went well. Yeah, she's doing it, yeah, yeah. But I don't know that I had that many mentors. That, um, you know, Greg Broman and I talk yeah. about, yeah. but that was, I have more emotional mentors, mm. to be honest, because there is a lot of emotional component to what we do. Uh, you know, interpersonal relationship stuff, and yeah. you know, people not getting along, people getting along too well. Um, pecking order. So I think I had more, like Ina Pinkney is Mm -hmm. one of my mentors Mm. in Chicago. Okay. You know, sort of helps you through those dark moments. Yeah. She brings you a box of chocolate band-aids. That's like step number one to help you. (laughs) (laughs) I didn't know that. She brings them to openings, so invite her to your opening. That's, wow. (laughs) That's perfect. Uh, um, Were you ever angry that you didn't have 
female mentors, stronger female, female mentors? I, I don't think I ever thought to be angry or frustrated okay. about it. Yeah. No. yeah, that's what I meant. Maybe not angry, but like there was something missing that you wish had been there. I mean, Greg was a mentor for you in a culinary sense, and he's like, he's an enlightened male that I think you would say saw you just as a chef. Yeah. Just as Luke, who's promoted you, is an enlightened male, and he doesn't see you as Mary the female, she's just chef. Even though my nickname was Little Girl. Oh. To be honest. Well. It's like, Little Girl, get over here. And <laughs> yeah. But, you know, it was, it was the 70s. Yeah. It was the 80s. Right, right, yeah. right. But he didn't see you as lesser than, no. or, or what I, have you. And, yeah. or, or if he did, I didn't feel it. Okay. And that sometimes is what matters. Like, yeah. how do you, you yeah. know, do you feel it or not? Yeah. So talk about the vitalness of a mentor for you. I think, you know, when I moved out to Boston and I dropped my resume off at Anna Sortoon's restaurant, Oleana, which is an institution in Cambridge now, um, and, you know, literally got a call the next day saying, come in, come hang out with us. You know, it was a totally different world than I was used to because entirely different cuisine. And uh, I always say it just it opened up my heart, this, this food, and being classically trained here, learning an entirely new way to cook, mm. that it wasn't necessarily like, I'm going to take you under my wing and mentor you, but I'm going to teach you how to do this food. Another this, language. Another language. Yeah. You know, and I'm going to show you how we, we, we put our, our souls into this food and the spices and everything, very, you know, very particular kind. And that's such a gratifying part of what we do, the teaching part, right. the sharing part, the like telling the story or the lore or the... You yeah, know, and sort of sparking someone else. I teach a lot. Yeah, it's mostly what I do now, and yeah. with my students. Were well, you giving back after? Well, I just I love imparting all this information, and then they come back to the next class and go, "Oh, you know those uh, shishito peppers you taught us how to make? I did those three times since the last <laughs> class." Right. right. And like it gets into people's lives. I think right. it's almost. I'm not religious, but I think it's like the secret to eternal life is to teach people something, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and then you've impacted their lives, and you're you're in their lives forever. Yeah, yeah. You know. Well, Rick's talked about this. You've talked about this, like the crew that came through True, yeah. that that went on the Graham Elliotts of the world, the uh, Justin Carlos of the world, the you know, Chris on and on. Yeah, yeah, Chris Pandel, right? Exactly. Where Matt you know, Gallus, yeah, you guys, Della were, Gossett, you yeah. guys refer to them as the kids, right? And they are, yeah, because they cut their teeth, but they also learned how to be leaders. They understood what, um, what you know, like how to how to not fall apart when it really gets, but how to care about your people. All of those things with great services, just respect for themselves, respect for the environment, everything. Yeah, yeah, just day after day, you can't write it out, but they experienced it, and now they're passing it on to the next generation. Yeah. And you know, my show was a big Right. I go to places all the time and there'll be sort of these like 30 year olds that come up to me and say, you know what, I used to watch your show when yep. I was little and you're why I'm a pastry chef. Yeah. And I say, let's call your parents so I can apologize <laughs> first. <laughs> But how you doing? Yeah. <laughs> How's your feet? <laughs> right. But you have this impact on people's lives. It's yeah. very exciting. It's yeah. very satisfying. And it helps them identify their love, you know, and, and find their Absolutely. place in something that makes sure. them fulfilled, which what could be better? Well, that's why I call you the first lady of pastry for America. And um, this is such a privilege because uh, as the series was conceived, uh, the college is fantastic. Volrath was an amazing supporting partner, and they turned and said, you know, who do you know? Who can you call? And I called you, and I called Rick, and once you both said yes, which was incredibly generous, and you are both giving back, and I know that's important, and I kind of knew you'd say yes, but, you know, still, <laughs> then I had this superpower that I could call anybody else in the wow. country and build around because the two of you said yes. How great is that, that, yes. you know, us... I teach at a place called Flowered Apron, and it's a program that takes women who are, have been homeless or had drug abuse issues mm -hmm. or domestic violence issues and helps them restart their lives through baking. They choose That's baking awesome. as a way to re-enter and yeah. become someone who can get a job. And I, you know, the, the feeling of knowing that you've almost saved somebody's life yeah. in a way. Yeah. And I say to them, you, know, you may have only worked with me a couple days, but you put me on your resume. Yeah. And you yeah. tell people to yeah. call me yeah. because it's going to give you cred that will catapult you in a way, you know, that you deserve. Right, right. 
So in your early career, is there anybody you've been able to do that for where it's like you have painted yourself red for me? And I know you're on your path, but stay in touch. Use me as a reference point yeah. or for, you know, just to bounce things off of. Yeah, there's, there's definitely been some wonderful people that I've worked with who have started out in plating desserts, uh, doing prep work <laughs> and all of that, and then, you know, have decided... Well, maybe I maybe I don't want to you know pursue whatever this career, you know maybe they're on a college break or something and they decide to go work in a restaurant right. you know and so I've, I've had a number of people say you know thank you for showing me how to do this taking the time to do this because you know that was really important to you, and that is always the best yeah. when you when yeah. you get that so yeah. there's a I couple I deny that worked for us but <laughs> <laughs> no but occasionally like someone will call and they'll be like. You know, this kid's resume says you he yes. worked at True. Did he? And I, I text Rick. I'm like, do you remember someone? <laughs> He's like, no, do you? And, you know, I mean, a lot of people came through there. Sure, but <laughs> sure. It's a testament well, to a long-standing well, restaurant. Awkward there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So as you move forward into more teaching and, and legacy and some more books, I'm sure, and so forth, TV's a bore at this point for you, I'm sure. So. No, I love I'm doing kidding. TV. I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. And Food you Network, move in, call me. You, you move into <laughs> expanding your career. I got two more kids to career. put through college. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, call. Uh, you move into expanding your career. Now you're in a leadership role. Um, like, how do, you, um, how do you keep it engaging and fresh and new for yourself? And, and then still be aware of some of the barriers that, that may be out there. Because it's not like... Uh, the thing that we talked about before, where we no longer say women chef, has, has evaporated, right? It's still a discussion in the national media. It's still a, a moniker or a label, which is wrong, but it's where we are. So how do you manage those barriers, and then how do you, how do you move forward? How do you challenge yourselves? I think a lot of it, for me, is I have to continue to go out to eat and uh, go to restaurants and have experiences because that's how you keep moving forward is you see what other people in your community are doing um, and you try to emulate that and say, oh, how can I change what I'm doing already? Uh, it also helps that at our restaurant we change our menu every day, so that's always a challenge right, for us depending right. on, on what's available from the farmers uh, that are coming through the back door, sometimes literally overflowing with stuff. Um, so that creates a, a very unique challenge that not every chef gets to, to work with, um, which it's a blessing and a curse, I think. Or would be able Absolutely. to or would want to. Right, exactly. Yeah. Um, and I also think that patience is a huge thing, mm. especially because I think um, there, you know, there are some people, the area that I live in, it's a more rural area, you know, so they're not necessarily used to, to somebody, a, a female chef in that role. So just kind of really just trying to keep what we're doing and as maintain ourselves as a community institution, keep our philosophy, you know, the way that it is, like that's that's kind of my plan and I'm just inspired by the the area that I live in because it's absolutely gorgeous and I can go take a walk for half an hour, 45 minutes in the the Kickapoo Reserve and, you know, my yeah. outlook on life is is pretty good after that. So right. Right. That's again, going back you. to that balance of needing to step away sometimes in mm -hmm. order to to move forward. What about you, Gail? Well, I was thinking about how did this momentum happen and how do I, do I set goals to move forward? And I, I really don't, which I know is the wrong answer <laughs> to the question of like, what's your five-year plan and what's your, you know, I don't actually have any plan. I can kind of see like a week in advance. Um, and part of why I work really short term is because if I had set out in 1976 to have at my own TV show, I could I could never right. imagine that that was even a possibility for myself. So the things that get offered up to us, I think, at this point in our careers, you couldn't figure, you couldn't imagine that five years ago. And if you did, people would say like, "Wow, does she have big balls?" Like, could I? <laughs> would I say like, "Oh, I want a TV show, and I want to have eight books, and a root beer company, and a ramp business?" And yeah. Like when you look at all the stuff I've done or do. It, that would just seem almost like precocious to, to be someone who wanted to do all that stuff. Yeah. So I don't even set goals, to be perfectly honest. And I just kind of try to manage, like tomorrow I have to pick up honey from my neighbor who has beehives and <laughs> deliver to a restaurant that ordered five pounds of ramps for me and then take another 40 pounds of ramps to Michael Jordan's restaurant. So one month out of the year, I'm a farmer, not a <laughs> chef. Okay. And I go in the back door with like gloves and mud and jeans yeah. and stuff. Um, but you know, 10 years ago, did I say like, oh yeah, I want to grow something that 
you know, is a local product that yeah. chefs use. Like, that wasn't it. It was, I want some alone time with Geo because my twins were born. Right. And we would go out in the woods and forage for ramps for True. And then the next year, one of my sous chefs left and was a chef de cuisine. And he's like, is Geo picking ramps this year? <laughs> I need 10 pounds. So our, our, ten, business was our 10 pound business went to 20 pounds. So yeah. doubled in one year. Ah. Yeah. So like that's been going on for 14 years now. Did we plan to build a micro agro business? No. Yeah. Does it look interesting on his college resume? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Do I like being out I'm in the woods? Did you spend money? time yes. with him all those years? Yeah. Yeah. I right. mean, now we actually hire someone to go out and pick during the day because Gio's in college. <laughs> Subcontracted. But, yeah. sure. no, but we're making jobs. You know, yeah, we made right, a job right. for somebody. Yeah. So I find it's just sort of this organic growth. Like the root, my root beer company, yeah. I've been doing that 20 years. Right. I just did it because I lived in England and they and didn't have root, root beer. Root beer. Right. Yeah, yeah, it's like I am dying here without root beer, so yeah. I'm going to learn how to make That's it. That's how I knew you were a true Midwestern girl, by the way. Oh, what, because of the root beer? Because of the root beer. Yes. I'm like, yeah. Yeah, can't, can't do it without it. Right. So I sort of like figure out something I like doing and then it sort of turns into, you know, I'm an entrepreneur, it turns into a business. Yeah, yeah. Not on purpose though, it's just, that just kind of happens. Right. It takes like us I'm, to pretty crazy places, this life that yeah, we lead. Yeah, I, I just, you know, my neighbor's got ducks. I'm like, can I buy duck eggs from you? And I can sell them to my chefs. And, you know, it's just sort of, I feel like sometimes my job is to either get money from people who have it and get it to people who don't mm -hmm. when I'm doing charity work, or get product from people who have it to people that don't have it and, and want can it. use it. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. I'm like this matchmaker yeah. a lot of times, <laughs> either for you know eggs and produce and honey or for dollars of support. You're a culinary yenta. I am. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a. I'm getting a T-shirt. That's like that. <laughs> culinary yenta. That's me. Good. Okay. Thank Oi. you. This has been lovely. Uh, women of culinary, I'm so glad that you are. Let's <laughs> just you. leave it at that. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Thank you very much.